What's going on, beautiful people? Thank you for tuning in and watching. And in this video, first of all, I appreciate your appreciation of my videos. I can't forget to tell you guys that, right? So my apologies when I do. I really appreciate your appreciation of my videos. So we got a, a, a video for you guys today and um, discussing the plausible theory that Moses was high on DMT when he received his revelations, the Ten Commandments. And um, I'm already prepared for a shit storm in the comments section and just a shit storm overall. You're a fucking piece of shit. You lost your head. I'm going to read an article for you guys, okay? I'm just, I'm reading an article. That's all. I'm becoming a conduit for speculation at this point. I mean, this is all speculation. So the article is from a website called higherperspectives.com. A very, 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 very trusted website. Okay, high level shit. <laughs> so we'll read the article. I mean, this is not just in that website, actually, it's in several websites. So, according to Professor Benny Shannon at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, it is likely that Moses' encounter, as written in the Bible with the burning bush and his conversation with Yahweh, happened while he was under the influence of DMT. So he's saying it's possible, right? Professor Benny Shannon. That's not me talking. That's Professor Benny Shannon, okay? From the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. It seems logical that something was altered in people's consciousness. There are other stories in the Bible that mention the use of plants. For example, the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden. Say Shannon, the use of such substances, most of which fall in our contemporary Western culture under the label drug, has in many traditions been considered sacred. You know, psychedelics have been sacred, considered sacred in many ancient traditions. Still do in, you know, native tribes, native cultures in the Amazon. Anyway, not to go off tangents, Professor Shannon argues that Israelites may have used acacia, I don't know, I'm probably mispronouncing it, some kind of a plant, and paganum during religious ceremonies that involved DMT. Acacia, again, sorry for mispronouncing it, I don't know how it's pronounced, just correct me in the comments, take a big shit and, and, then, and then correct me. Acacia is mentioned frequently in the Bible as it was used to construct the Ark of the Covenant. Of course, all of this is based on the assumption that Moses actually existed. The Bible is simply not a reliable source of historic historical evidence. It is still fascinating hypothesis as to why Moses would have experienced a burning bush that spoke to him as the voice of God. <laughs> what, it's, what is likely is that someone had the experience with the burning bush and a reasonable theory is that the person, that person was on DMT. <laughs> what do you think? So that's article. It's a pretty short article. Uh, and I find the same sort of, uh, actually, I find it in The Guardian as well, right? Guardian is, I guess, more of a trusted website than the other one, right? But I mean, still. But there, there's a few websites that talk about this. Uh, that, you know, again, in The Guardian, it says, Moses saw God because he was stoned again or something. Okay, so, <laughs> so <laughs> the idea as portrayed by this article is that Moses was fucking stoned. He was stoned on something and that's the burning bush and that burning bush could have contained DMT, right? Maybe not the DMT we think of, the crystal powder, but that burning bush contained, the acacia was called, I don't know what it's, how it's pronounced, might have contained, probably contained DMT and he, I mean, how did he hear the voice of God through the plant? Well, the pl he consumed it, right? He smoked it, he ingested it, and he heard the voice of God. Now, this doesn't seem as surprising and as absurd if you've had personal psychedelic experiences, high doses, either DMT or high doses of so on psilocybin mushrooms, peyote, LSD, it doesn't seem all that strange because didn't you hear that? Like, I mean, a lot of people report hearing the voice of God and I certainly have. Like, I've, I've 
I've heard the voice of God. I've talked to God. I've, for you guys who've been following me, I make trip reports. And if you've seen them, you know I have many encounters with the voice of God, with the voice of wisdom. And usually it's somewhere in the woods, right? I mean, Moses was in a, on a mountain, right? And so a mountain, he was in the wilderness. He could hear the voice of God better. And, you know, a plausible hypothesis, not a theory, that he, this fucking guy probably was wearing short pants and he was high on the MT. Probably, right? So, I mean, it's just a funny hypothesis to discuss and contemplate. Now, there are many people out there that are aware of the notion that the possibility, the strong case that actually religions were birthed out of the use of psychedelics. That before before we had access to psychedelics, we didn't really have religions. And, and so as we started to consume these psychoactive ego dissolving compounds, we started developing religions and we started to develop a relationship to higher dimensions and higher intelligence and higher power and higher entities. And um, interestingly enough, if you look at the Hindu gods, many of the Hindu gods are reported to be seen by people who have delved deep enough into the DMT realm. Those Krishna, Vishnu, all of these gods, they're, they're described by people who've delved into that DMT realm and they say we, we see similar entities to these things, similar entities to these Hindu deities. So again, the theory that this the cow is sacred because of the mushroom, that it grows, the mushroom grows on cow shit. And so this is sort of the original how the cow became sacred in India. And so again, it's all stoner talk, right? The stoner talk says that, you know, these... Hindu guys that those gurus were high on something, psilocybin, uh, soma, I think was, was the thing they used. And, uh, you know, so basically DMT containing plants and they've delved deep enough, they've delved deep enough into these realms combined with yoga and years of meditation. Yeah. You're probably going to meet some, something out there, many things, and you're going to bring them back and draw them out and make them your gods. And in the same way, you know, Moses, the theory goes, the hypothesis goes, he was high on DMT, he heard the voice of God, God told him, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, and the rest of it. Which seemed like, you know, most of the Ten Commandments seem pretty, com like, not common sense, maybe common sense now, but it seems pretty reasonable. Like, it's a reasonable request, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. These are reasonable requests for the most part. And they are things you would, you would hear on a psychedelic experience. They're definitely things you would hear. You would hear something along the rooms. Because I think the psychedelic experience tunes you into the dimension of truth, into the dimension of love. And it can also go pretty fucking bad and pretty fucking dark. Right. This is a, I have a video topic coming up, the dark side of psychedelics. You know, some people, the Aztecs, for example, they've used psychedelics and they've tuned into demonic frequencies and demonic entities that would tell them to sacrifice, uh, sacrifice human, human sacrifice for the gods. Right. So they've managed to use psychedelics, the Aztecs, to tune in to really demonic and dark entities and dark places and dark dimensions. So I'm not saying, you know, just by taking psychedelic, you're tuning into the frequency of love and wisdom and truth. Although that's a tendency to happen, that is not always the case. Because we know that psychedelics magnify how you feel. If you're living in such a dark dimension, it might just come in and magnify that dark dimension for you. And maybe that's what happened to the Aztecs, right? So, yeah, that's just very interesting. I thought I want to share this with you guys. I think religion and psychedelics are heavily, heavily intertwined and you can't talk about one without the other. That's what's hilarious, right? I mean, there are also like, uh, again, theories and hypotheses that 
Christianity started by a bunch of people who were using psychedelics. And uh, yeah, it goes on and on the theories, but I really think, and I, I know jack shit about this, right? I mean, I know absolutely jack shit. I'm sort of, I'm sort of a joker here. I'm just coming in and I'm just like, here it is. This is what's going on here. I don't know fucking idea, right? Maybe I'll do, I'll do more research as we go on, you know, because I get to be very, very interested in psychedelics as time progresses. And, um, but I think what it seems to be something certain is that religion and psychedelics are so heavily intertwined and you can't separate one without the other, you know, like you can't, you know, you can't, you can't, you know, in, in like Christianity and mainstream Christianity, mainstream Islam, you're not supposed to use any kind of drugs or whatever. Well, the very birth of your religion might have been because some fucking guy that was wearing short pants got high on DMT and received some revelations and started a, a religion around it, right? I, I will use Uncle Tony's words. Uncle Tony is a guy I meet here. Some of you guys maybe have seen him come in the videos a few times. You'll see him more and more as the weather gets better and I'm outside more. Uh, you know, he says, uh, you know, that Jesus guy, that Jesus, 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 he was, he was, you know what he was doing? He was smoking dope and preaching love. So also, you know, Again, these plants, these marijuana, psychedelics, and all these things, they're so integral and a key part to what it is to be a human. And it's our egotistic ways in being in the world, separation of city from the nature, separation of man from woman, separation of everything. We separate everything, right? Separation, 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 separation of the nuclear family from the rest of society, from the tribe. On and on it goes. So we we created a very egotistical society that thinks me, me, separation, separation. But that if you actually go back to your roots, you will find that there's no separation and that you are the plants and the plants are you. And the plants have been aiding you in your evolution as a human for the longest time ever. So it's not, it's not absurd. It's not oof, out of the world to think that, yeah, a guy wearing short pants by the name of Moses happened to be smoking DMT and that was a burning bush and he came up with these pretty nice revelations for that time you know because if you look at the revelations he received they were very relevant for that time and I think that's a character of the psychedelic so for Moses at the time you know a lot of fucking killing a lot of stealing a lot of this thou shall not kill thou shall not steal very relevant for that time Whereas now maybe somebody uses psychedelic and you get different revelations. Maybe you get revelations that are more about love, love everybody, all of that, right? Maybe because it's more relevant for this time because this time is we're more tolerant as humanity. Yes, they're still killing and stealing, but now it's highly frowned upon. Whereas back in Moses' days, that, I, that was the normal thing to do. Now it's not the normal thing anymore. And the proof is if you see somebody killing some, something on, online, everybody freaks out. You go back to Moses' time or a thousand years when Genghis Khan and his Mongol hordes were roaming the lands, raping and killing everyone. That was the normal thing. You kill somebody that was like, oh, you, you, just whatever. It's, I mean, everybody does it in every culture. So, but now we're a more tolerant society. So when people go on and have these psychedelic experiences, they receive more revelations that are more relevant to this time, right? And, and so I think that's what it was. Anyway, we'll end the video here. Uh, God bless you all. <laughs> and, uh, that's it. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to shit on me all over in this video saying you're a fucking retard. You don't know shit. What are you talking? Like you're a stoner hippie. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. God bless you. God bless you. And as always, don't forget to subscribe or you're going to sleep with the fishes.